For my brothers never had an ear to hear him. These the bricks for our sisters help us build it. If I could be a black fly on the wall, I can hear and see it all and have the mind of a god. Black, 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 black. Fly, 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 fly. Black, black, black. Welcome to another episode of Black Fly on the Wall. It's your boy Elad. I'm your host. Um, we're here with some very, very dope individuals to have a very deep, impactful, yet insightful mm. conversation <laughs> entitled Act Like a Wife Before You Become One. Mm. I, got some, I got some very, very dope gentlemen here. Sam, my co host, introduce yourself. Yeah, man. Sam Archer, man. Glad to be here again. Uh, Groom Cave on the way. Check out the YouTube. All the good stuff, man. Let's get it. Absolutely. To my far right, introduce yourself, my man. Absolutely. My name is Derek, um, a.k.a. Big Humble Energy. You know, I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a content creator. You know what I'm saying? I'm a vibe, too. So it's gonna, definitely going to be a good time. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Appreciate you being here, my man. Absolutely. Uh, uh, introduce yourself to Lance Saturn. Lance Saturn is better known as LG Burner uh, from Durham. Uh, happy to be out here. Husband, father, entrepreneur. Absolutely. LG, you a married man. <laughs> Tell us what you think about this title, this episode right here. Hey, it's heavy, bro. It's heavy. Uh, I think it's going to spark a lot of controversy. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> just just the comment, uh, act, was, act like a wife before you become one. Um, it's real. It is, it is a very real statement that a lot of people aren't going to like to hear, I think. They don't really like that comment of don't do stuff until you're married. And I, just, I don't mm -hmm. think that's reality, mm -hmm. you know. Now, you know, typically... You know, these type of conversations, you see them on the internet, you see them on social media. They're typically, you know, had by men who are single. Yeah. You know, out here just really expanding their, providing their opinion on the topic. But here you have a panel full of married men who can easily discuss this topic, provide insight to women who are seeking marriage, who may be able to, you know, from a husband's point of view, this is what marriage looks like, right? And or this is what married men look for in their wives, because at the end of the day, um, when one particular gender is trying to impress the other gen gender, it's best to go to the opposite gender to find out, hey, what exactly do I need to do? You know, what I mean, especially as young men, you know, we get some of our most deep, insightful um, things related to relationships from our moms, from our sisters, from our aunties, from our female friends. Right. And that's where you really gain the true knowledge. Yeah. You talking to your homies about it, but you be thinking about your head like, boy, you had a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You've been able to keep a girlfriend for more than two right, years. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But now what it really is about is that when you really are really wanting to get some information that you can deploy and apply, you're getting it from from a, from a, that divine femininity. So it's important that we tap in with that. Uh, Derek, do you believe a woman is supposed to act like a wife before she becomes one? Mm. I believe that Definitely, you know, stand on business. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, I think that don't just be a good time, but plan for a good time, mm -hmm. right? Plan for the future. What do you want your your marriage to look like? You know, what I'm saying, what what do you want your life to look like with kids? Mm -hmm. And then set the expectation. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, when you speak it to your significant other, they have to know exactly what they need from you. Yeah. There's no guessing. Yeah, You're not absolutely. guessing over here. Communicate with me. Let me know something, right? Let me know that, okay, you know, this is where we're at, and this is where I want to go. What do you think about that? Mm -hmm. What do you think about marriage? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? What do you think about having kids? Yeah. That sets the tone for that person that you're with to understand, like, oh, I know where you at. And if I'm not serious, I need to go. Yeah. For sure. You see what I'm saying? So, um, and and definitely, you know, be be the peace, be that supportive person that that person needs. Um, whether you have the vision, whether that person has the vision, definitely support them because um, a lot of us men sometimes we not we we don't talk about yeah. things that we going through. But if you create a safe space for us to talk, baby, yeah. Yeah, we are gonna crawl yeah, right under yeah. you, right, yeah. 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 and tell you exactly how we're feeling, uh, what we want to do, and I don't know how to get here. Can you help me? Right, it creates that safe space for that. I think I think a lot of a lot of men should lead those conversations too, though. Like, I think women do take on the ownership of asking those questions. So, what are we? What are we doing? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. But oh, I yeah. think as men, I oh, think yeah. it's important for us to oh, yeah. identify 
what we want in a wife and have those conversations of what do you want? What mm-hmm. do you, like like you said, it shows intentional. Um, it shows the outcome that you want and then just go from there. Man. No, I, that was a major whenever, before I got married, that was something that I knew that the average man did not do, that I would do mm-hmm. whenever I was on the dating mm-hmm. scene. And especially like whenever I met my wife, I was aggressive in the approach of, all right, what are we doing? All right, providing more so that objectivity and that structure, which a lot of times women lack. So a lot of times, like their strong suits are things that are a lot more free flowing. Um, they prov- and they and that is good for us as right. men because we're sometimes too rigid mm-hmm. in the way that we do things, and we're sometimes overly objective. Yeah. Whereas it's very good to have a woman that balances you out. That'd be like, you know what? Just just let it go with the flow for a little bit. Just 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 let it go. And 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 honestly. That's what that's that divine femininity that women bring to the table, yeah. right? Because a lot of times as men, women can sometimes overthink things from the point of view of, well, what are we? What are we? What are we? Well, that box gets checked if the man then provides his objectivity and say, this is where we are. This is where we're going. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and then that then also makes your life easier because you no longer have to ask those deal with that the, the famous question of what are we? Right. You told her what it is. So she now can operate and be free flowing in her femininity. She's she's safe. She's comfortable. She's secure because she knows that you all are moving towards a certain direction yeah. together. Mm. You know what I mean? And so um, I think men. That's a, that's a, that's the first gem mm-hmm. of the day. Yeah. Men be on the offensive, right? I, I think mm-hmm. a lot of men lack like that, that that intention, man. Absolutely. Um, and I mean, people will say I'm crazy, but I mean, I know I wasn't gonna marry my wife the the day I met her. Like the first time we had a hug, we dated probably. Three months later, she was my beneficiary. A month later, wow. mm. like I knew I was married. Yeah, it was tough, no, man. it was that's gonna be my wife. It wasn't the intention was very clear. She didn't understand it because we were young, mm-hmm. but the intention was very clear from the jump. You're gonna be my wife. We're gonna get married. We're gonna have kids. We're gonna have a family. Knew it from the jump. And I feel like men don't lead with that intention a lot. Mm-hmm. They they want women to follow and submit, but they're not giving them anything to follow and submit to. Not putting mm-hmm. no work in. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Nah. Well, you, you know, know what, what I'm you know what brings you what brings a good man to that point, I think the fir- even before that, is that it's our ability to pick the right woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like many times with men, we ignore the red flags that women bring. And you focus on the big butt and the smile. Yeah. You yeah. focus on the, the the Instagram content. You focus on she got this many bags, this many trips. She's in this type of network. She's in this sorority. Whereas what you should be focusing on is what's on the what's the meat on the bone. What's the what's the higher faculties that she controls and has as a woman that makes her dynamic. And so a lot of times with men, it's discernment. It's the yeah. fact that we don't discern and choose the right woman, which then leads us down this negative path of dating or um, feeling scorn from dating women is because you can, you consistently pick the wrong woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You consistently ignore flags that don't mesh well with you. She may be a great woman, but just not for you. Yeah. Right. And I feel like That's- as men, you got to have that discernment and that level of accountability as well. So whenever you are out here, Looking for your wife, identify a wife, yeah. not somebody who's a short term fix. Absolutely. And we don't, yeah. and, and to bounce off that, we don't take accountability for the women that we've chosen either. Absolutely. It's yeah. like, oh man, so and so was the was the worst worst girl I ever had. Bro, you chose her. Exactly. Like, yeah. you, you literally pursued her. You asked her out. This yeah. is not yeah. a culture of arranged marriage. Yeah. So, no. like, we have the ability to choose, literally, choose who you want to be with. Yeah. Right. You know, and I feel like, with that level of power, we have to have massive responsibility yeah. mm-hmm. that flows with that. And we're often a reflection of who we are in that season. Absolutely, like, all the time. Oh, yeah. It's like that's our whole life. Should a should a woman be a wife before she married? Yeah, but you should also be a husband. Absolutely, and I and I always tell like a lot of a lot of men that I speak with, right? You don't always got to come healed, but come in the process of mm-hmm. healing, mm-hmm. so you can make an informed decision. Mm-hmm. A lot of times we make decisions based off the state of mind that we're in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it wasn't until I got married till I realized like, oh, this is some things I need to work on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now I'm going to tell brothers that's, that's, okay, you're in a relationship. Hey, if you're not ready to be in a relationship, if you're still playing around, mm-hmm. leave her alone. Mm-hmm. Or, or, or tell her. Or tell her. Or tell her. Yeah, yeah. But she may I mean, want to be around for the play. That's tough, baby. Don't do that. <laughs> well, relationships are, are, are constant growth and constant change. Right. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you got to come in the process here, but you're going to be changed, bro. Like, yeah. you're Absolutely. not the same man that you were when you and your wife started dating. You're exactly. not the same man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. None of us are. 
Uh, so, and they're not the same woman either. Yeah. So it is a murky thing when you say act like a wife because, yo, my wife did everything I thought a wife should do at 20. Now at 35, I'm like, Nah, that you know what I'm saying. Yeah. If she was still doing the same yeah. stuff we was doing when we was twenty, yeah. Yeah. it'd be. A, and and yeah. if I was doing the same stuff I was doing when I was twenty, it'd be right. a right. whole a different conversation, right. bro. Right. 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 So right. that growth and change comes, you know. So you figure out people, and it's it's work. It's constant work. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like I said, I'm twelve years in, and it's still work. It's not bad work, but it's work. work. And I think yeah. people right. hear work or change and, and growth, and they just immediately think it's bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. Me and my wife learn stuff about each other every day. That's mm -hmm. not bad, bro. We're just yeah. learning new things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there, to your point though, like it's important for men to, if you're in that playful stage, like affirm with the women that you're dating that you're in that playful stage. You'll be surprised how many women are also in that phase. Mm -hmm. But where women, where men get in trouble is that they don't understand that women are chameleons. Mm -hmm. So many times, where as you're offering yourself up to be this astute gentleman that is ready for marriage, where you don't know that. Many times women are changing themselves to fit the mold to be with you. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you just come correct and be honest, you can get that true reflection of who she is, right? Yeah. So as you're 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 acting like you want to be a husband, which you really want to play, mm -hmm. and then you're getting a wife in return in that, and then you're upset because she's not trying to be on that same vibe yeah. that you truly are on, but you can really negate all of those things mm -hmm. by just being honest. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh Derek, what Show what was one name one thing that your wife did whenever you all were dating when you knew that she was gonna be your wife? Support. That's all the brother need. Support, man. <laughs> you know, when I was in college, man, I was hosting all these different events, and you know, at that time I was on playtime. Right, yeah. I was on playtime. Right. You know what I'm saying? And a, a lot of the women that were around me would actually get mad because I was splitting my time with everything else. With my wife, she was like, Go ahead, baby. Do you? That, um, I'm a, some, I'm a that simple support. gesture of letting a man cook <laughs> into his purpose. Yeah. Though, right, really, because she was supporting your purpose at that time, right? Like, Absolutely. Was in a particular season Absolutely. where like, you was really grinding towards your purpose and she wasn't she was more more support than a distraction. Support, yeah. man. Yeah. And then uh, during that time, I was also in graduate school. Sometimes I'd come mm. home, the laundry is done, yeah. food is cooked. Oh, I said, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Whatever you want, I'll give it to you. <laughs> right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So right. um, she support me, uh, supported me wholeheartedly. And I was like, you know what? I need to see where this goes. There's potential here. I just need to ask a few questions to see if this is the right thing. Because, again, I was still dipping and dabbling. And I didn't know if I actually wanted to be married, but she actually helped me to get there by saying, look, I'm all you need mm -hmm. by doing all these things for you and, and, and letting you have peace at that time. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a beautiful feeling, man. And now, you know, like I said, I'm five years in. I'm loving it every, you know, yeah. every second. That's lovely, man. man I, I and, you like can, and you can tune into that YouTube channel. And <laughs> you see it. You definitely see it, you know, yeah. for real. So. Absolutely. LG, what is something, what was that one thing you mentioned that you always knew? Man, I'm gonna be honest, bro. We, we started talking on the phone and never stopped, bro. Wow. Like, we started talking on the phone in November of 2011 and, and never stopped. So I can't even say, like, I always knew, you know. I But I also always knew that I wanted a, a, a wife, a family, a kid. Like, I always knew I wanted that. So I can't even, I mean, the support, you know, I do events as well. You know, being able to come home after doing four homecomings and not arguing because somebody, I took a, a picture with a girl. Mm. You know, little things like that, that mm. trust and that the way we were able to build. And mm -hmm. I was able to build my company out and eventually become her company and, and do all of that together. She was willing to work with me, not against me. Yeah. Um, and some of my past relationships, you know, they didn't really like the event planning scene. I'm out on the scene. I'm around drunk girls every sure. night. I'm like, yo, I'm, you like the money I'm bringing in? You like that we're going on trips? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It's yeah. tough, man. Balance. Yeah. And so, like, that right there um, echoes um, a woman's ability to be supportive, but also, again, like, going back to purpose, knowing what's purposeful to you in mm -hmm. that moment. Like, I think with me, like, my wife, she's here, she supports me with this black fly on the wall stuff. Like, she sees, like, the stuff that nobody sees. Like, yeah. I work hard. Mm -hmm. You know, the women in your life, they see the commitment. They see the consistency, the persistence, the late nights, the lack of sleep, the planning, the on the call with this one, the conference calls, the this and that, the push. And so it's always good to have a solid woman behind you because 
Like I remember the days when I was single, I was like you said, I was splitting my time. Mm -hmm. So I really wasn't really maximizing my potential mm -hmm. in my business. Ooh. Yeah. So men really kind of think that sometimes they feel like being single makes them more powerful in the things that they do in their life. Right. But actually having a solid woman stability. Focus. behind focus you and allows stability, you to focus, bro. focus and stability, pushes bro. you to take care of yourself, to take your vitamins, to eat clean, yeah. Come on now. to yeah. get to the gym. Come on now. Just so that you can, it's like a fine-tuned engine, just so that you can add oil to your engine mm -hmm. to be able to do those things that you want to do. And many times, like, and we would come to you next, Sam, many times where, especially us that have healthy relationships with our mothers, we can many times find, even if you don't notice it in the beginning, you would notice as your wife matures how she often reflects some mm -hmm. of those things, those principles right. that your mother has. Mm -hmm. I, think we, I think we underestimate as men how freeing it really is to not have to battle your heart. Yeah. Like we got to battle everything else when we walk out that door. So like you said, you hosting, you got to battle the competition. You got to battle people yeah. hating, and you got to yeah. battle all, all the other factors that go into what you're doing and your, and your purpose. And then got to come home and battle your heart about what you're doing too. Yeah. Like that's the most freeing. And I think, like you said, people feel like, well, being single and, not having to commit my heart to anybody, you still got to answer those questions, whether mm -hmm. you really all in or not. Well, right. and, and like you said about time, bro, like splitting your time is really important, bro, because if you, you know what I'm saying, you're talking to three or four women, you're giving one 30 minutes, one 45 minutes, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You got a wife, bro, hey, yeah. we'll do this hour and a half, we're going to take our time, and I'm going to get back to work, bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, it's that, done. and that goes to even split, that goes to balance in the yeah. marriage. Yeah, no, agree. That's yeah. huge. Balance my first three years huge. of marriage, man. Oh my goodness, I could <laughs> balance that one in my book. Right. We created a five year plan, and I was stuck to that five year plan. I wasn't going nowhere. I wasn't going to Tulum. Yeah. I wasn't Turks and Caicos. I wasn't going nowhere. But that, I see that caused a strain in my relationship because I had no balance. Yeah, it was like, okay, we got married, and then you're gonna do what you're gonna do. Well, I'm trying to drive the family forward, but driving the family forward, I forgot about us. Mm -hmm. So we also have to understand. And we also have to have balance in our marriages. Right. Right. And, but, and it's almost two, it's almost like it's three relationships. It's like it's your relationship with yourself, it's your relationship with your marriage, and then it's your family plan. Yep. And it's like your dedicated time with your wife has to be opposite out opposite, has to be put to the side exclusive outside of family time, mm -hmm. outside of self-improvement, mm -hmm. outside of all of those things has to be directly yep. just you and her. And I think many times as men, like you were saying, five-year plan, like you want a debt snowball, you want to yeah. get uh -huh. debt free, you want to get the mm -hmm. credit cards paid off, you want to get rid of the car payments, you want to get you put your family financially in a place. And for us as men, that's admirable to us because just like, yo, you, you're telling your wife or you're speaking to your wife, telepathically or in, in verbally saying like, yo, I'm doing this for us. Nice. Yeah. But many times we negate the nurturing side of what it means to be a husband. And like you were saying, like you ain't doing no Tulum, you ain't doing no Jamaica, <laughs> but your wife may need that Absolutely. at least one a year Absolutely. to be able to keep her engine going yeah. to, to provide you with us more. But it's, it's one of those goals that are tangible for us, right? I can tangibly say, okay, we're going to eliminate $5,000 and work towards and that. And this is how we do I it. Can't, I can't put into to steps how I'm going to be a good husband. Right. I just got to practice it. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I mean, and I think it's the conversations like this that, that people need to hear and understand that you have to set that time aside. Mm -hmm. Like, all jokes aside, people will laugh, man. Me and my wife watch wrestling every Monday, oh, wow. every Friday. <laughs> every Monday, every Friday. We put our phones to the side. We watch wrestling. That's our time. That's what's you know what I'm saying? Unless yeah, it's like a, 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 an event week or something like that and we yeah. got business. You know what I'm saying? We're not really talking to nobody else. And we're not having a whole bunch of conversation. Yeah. It's just me and her together. and our presence together. You That's know what important. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's so important. I think people don't understand that you have to have those nurturing moments, like you said, in those times just for y'all without our son. That's mm -hmm. just me and her. And LG, like you do events and all those things. So do, sometimes do you have to, and you, I think you hinted, you hinted towards this, like, for both of you all, do you sometimes have to stop and catch yourself whenever you kind of get overly focused? Because as men, we can get focused to a point where we don't call nobody, we ain't got to talk to nobody, we ain't got to get a hug from nobody, 
We ain't got to smile. We just so focused on that particular goal at that point. No like, haircut. So, well, <laughs> like, like, damn. I think communication is a big part. So Definitely. me and my wife, um, maybe for the first six years, yo, every February, at the end of February, we have a big fight going into March. Every mm. year. We couldn't figure out, like, why are we fighting every year around this time? Like, you look at memories and statuses, yeah. it's like, man, we was going through something yeah. right here. Why is this? CIAA in Charlotte was mm. huge for me. It was a money, ma- I mean, it was huge for me. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. my whole quarter. Mm-hmm. You know, we are talking about making monthly salaries yeah. in a yeah. weekend. It was sure. a quarter for me. <laughs> yeah. So the whole month of January and February, I wasn't nurturing my wife. Mm-hmm. I'm on the road. I'm going to got them go holler at bros. Like I need everybody in the building. I'm going to do everything I got to do with events. I'm going to host stuff. I'm doing everything I do. So when see I come around, everybody coming to spend money mm-hmm. with me. I neglected my wife for two months every year, and we didn't realize until mm-hmm. I took a year off. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. holy shit, you know what I'm saying? You were ignoring me for two months, and I, I didn't even think about it because I'm thinking like, hey. Hey, babe, I'm going to make this money and we're good for a quarter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it made sense, and it made sense yeah. to you. You're yeah. like, what, yeah. what's the yeah. problem? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Financially, we're going to be good. Yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? So, yeah. Right. So, like, and and that that's, I think, that's something that I think I'm resonating with now. Like, we have a, like, I was talking to you, we have a live show coming up on December 2nd. And it's like, I've been so hyper focused that I have been having to kind of like yank my own chain mm-hmm. to say, like, oh, let me, let me let me let me give my wife this this designated time yeah. or let me let me address this or let me make sure I'm intentional about this. And so I think it's all about having that awareness and being mindful as we're striving towards those big goals to say, you know what, let me plan a date. Yeah. You know yeah. what? Let me buy the flowers. You know what? Let's sit down and just watch a movie. What 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 needs to be done can wait till tomorrow. It'll happen. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's so I, important because you will realize that, oh, go ahead. I know you got that thing you got to go do. Go ahead, do that. Mm-hmm. Then you have peace. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times we expect our wives to automatically give us the support and peace and not realize that we got to do a little bit more work yeah. than what we have going on. You see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So for me, <laughs> babe, what yeah. you want to do? You want Chipotle? I know that's your favorite thing. We can go get you some Chipotle. Mm-hmm. Or you want to go on the date? Or you want to do this? And then in terms, I can come home. I'm like, hey, babe, I'm going to be up in like an hour. Can I go ahead and do do your thing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's like that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now you can you, go edit. Then let me go edit. Yeah. 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 For a few yeah. hours, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that a lot of men just assume that women are going to understand, Facts. too, in, when you, when they're in these lockdown moments. So after we figured that out, I was like, yo, come on the road with me, and I'm going to show you what I'm doing. Mm. So she, you know, there was one weekend, I think I had four parties in three different cities. And she was so, like, damn. So I, I made her come with me. So we drove three hours to Elizabeth City, did a party there Friday, left that night, drove to Greenville another hour and a half, did a day party, left the day party, drove to Raleigh, did a night party, left after that night, and drove to Charlotte and had a party on Sunday. And she's like, yo, this is what the hell you've been doing? <laughs> like, yeah, bro. There is no time for, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Of course, at this point, we're young, like, Cheating and all, you should worry about cheating. Like, bro, there is no time to cheat, bro. Yeah, I'm, I'm tired, bro. Like, this, is, this is work for me, bro. This is, this, this is, I know it, you know, you get on social media, you see me at parties. This is work, bro. Yeah. Like, even shit, even here, bro. I got them, had a day party in Charlotte yesterday, went went to sleep in the hotel, woke up at seven and drove up here because y'all was worried about traffic. And I, I understand why. Because that them 289 was yeah, backed yeah, up with a yeah. fucking accident for yeah. 20 minutes. See like, what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, yeah. Like, Charlotte you know folks. <laughs> yeah. And, see, and see, things like that, like introducing into your life, you only really got to do that once. Yeah. Like, like you said, she probably, that was probably the worst road trip bro, of her, her life. She's like, man, bro, I don't want to ride here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Go ahead. I yeah. think, I think, I think it's, it's good to see actionable dedication. Mm. Like, whereas, like, our women see us working at home to get things done, but actually seeing us in the field, seeing the hard work that we do come, like, manifest into reality, mm-hmm. that's also important, too, because... Many times they like you were saying they don't really can't really grasp it and get a handle of it, but it's like whenever they see it in person, they're like, "All right, you need your time because this right here is insane. I don't want, I don't want to come again." Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And then a lot of times when you have vision, that vision's for you. Mm. So you almost that's, gotta that's persuade yeah. the person that you with. Like 
this is my purpose. This is my vision. Mm -hmm. You might not can't see it, but I just need to explain it to you mm -hmm. so you can go ahead and try to support me in a way possible. Yeah. But if you can't see it and I'm, we're doing the work and you're not seeing the end goal, yeah. right? And we don't even have like a big milestone to even see like what's going on or all the progress that you're going to be like, you wasting your time. I've yeah. had so many conversations with men whose wives or significant others don't support their purpose. And that's a tough place for men to be in. It's almost like I've never had an experience where a man has told me that and you just you just see like it just come over his face like, yo, my wife don't support what I do. Like she don't support. And, it, and it's not the fact that he's doing anything like you would consider like what most yeah. women would shun, yeah. like nighttime events or anything like that. It's just it's like, yo, she's not tapped into my purpose. She don't mm -hmm. understand my purpose. She doesn't support what I'm doing. And it's like, to see that, that that look on a man's face to like almost like a disappointment, of shame, of sadness. It's just yeah. like I was like, yo, like that's a place where I don't want to be. Yeah, you know. And I and I wanted to make sure before I got married that that like my purpose allows me to be a good husband, because many times like the question is asked a lot of times on social media, what's more important? What's more important to a man, his purpose or his marriage? And many times it's like that's a tough place for a man to be in is because you can go, you can drop your purpose and attend to your marriage and you won't be a good husband. You'll be depressed. You'll be, you will lack self-confidence. You will lack all these things. But if you're really working in your purpose, that allows you to show up at home too. Cause you know, yeah. you're handling yeah. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. easily, yeah. easily, bro. You know, yeah. would you say that when did you, Derek, when would you say that you found your purpose and when did you have to start then blending your purpose mm. into your marriage? I found my purpose late. I found it in 2019 when we first started our YouTube channel. Um, maybe I was work. I mean, actually, I was working in it in college, hosting, yeah. but I didn't realize that was my purpose. My purpose is to create the vibes, mm -hmm. um, inspire people, and uh, happy and just and send positive energy. So in 2019, when we started the YouTube channel, everything was going great. We were having fun, and at some point, my wife started to be like, you know what? I don't think I really want to do this anymore. And I'm like, yo, we got to keep going. We, so many people are getting inspired. And like, I really feel like I'm, I'm, I'm finding my purpose. Yeah. And she didn't care. What was her reason for wanting to stop? Balance. Mm. Every day, I'm recording. Whether you with me, and I'm going to record. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm yeah, having yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> what you mean? <laughs> What's going on? Welcome to this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm having fun. Right. But for her, she's like, okay, well, you 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 did all of that, but I mean, I just got off of work and you ain't rubbed my feet. You mm -hmm. ain't even rubbed my back. You didn't even ask me how I was doing. You're saying, come check out this video. Mm -hmm. So I had to check mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, like, I found my purpose and I can't even work in it 100% because battling the person heart. that I'm with, I'm battling with. Yeah. Right. But she helped me understand that, dude, you don't have balance. Like, you're doing this a thousand percent. And when I ask you, let's go to, you know, get some seafood. At the time, we was eating seafood. But mm -hmm. get some seafood, you like, nah. You just want to stay home and do this. Mm -hmm. So I need some time, too. I'm your, I'm your wife. I mean, can, can, you, can, we, can we really imagine, though, how hard it is for, like, to sit there and see something that you know is taking time away from you that is a dream? That's a thought. You know what I mean? That you yeah. know, you can't I'm see not it. sitting here with, with my person right now because they up there editing a video or they up there planning something or creating something that, 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 that I can't even see. Well, I wanted to do a Linda that. I think that lies into trust, bro. Trust and belief. Like, mm -hmm. I, I can tell my wife, man, we're about to sell motherfucking egg shakers, bro. <laughs> like, and she's going to believe and trust that I got a plan to do that. Yeah. And she's going to support it 100%, bro. Mm -hmm. Because now, she know you believe it. Yeah, but now yeah. also, I'm also going to show her the plan that I have. Absolutely. And hey, this is how much this is going to cost, and this is the return on the investment that we're going to mm -hmm. make, and this is why we're doing this. Hey, right. we have this market that we're attacking. So I'm going to give her the entire business plan. It's not just, hey, baby, trust me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you say, act like wife, act like a husband. Women will submit if you give them a reason to submit. Yeah. But a lot of men either. don't. They just say, you're not trusting me. Yeah. I said I got it. That I got it ain't enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like like you said, like if you go upstairs, you're like, hey, I'm gonna go upstairs for the next six hours. I'm planning this event. She goes, you go up there, you playing a video game. She yeah. ain't never gonna believe yeah. you. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. a whole yeah. other kind of thing. She ain't never yeah. gonna yeah. believe yeah. you. Call of Duty. If yeah. you up there, she she done literally walked around the room, 
It's looked at you everywhere. and you ain't even looked up because right. you're so into the notebooks. Mm-hmm. You're like, okay, like I get it. Mm-hmm. Like I understand. He he's mm-hmm. actually working. Like those are two different realities. Right. right. And you you mentioned like a, a key word that is also another often topic that's submission. Yeah. Do you feel I believe that submission has to come before marriage, in my humble opinion, from women because it also, again, women have to understand that men are objective so that men have to see before he proposes a good man, well, that's that's matured and has discernment, has to see what he's getting himself into before he marries you. Absolutely. So as all for any woman that's listening, <laughs> this is a gem. He yeah. has to see what he's getting himself into before that. So if you hold back the submission, yeah. you hold back all these things that make you feminine. You hold back all of these things because you've been hurt in another relationship or cheated on in another relationship or you're carrying baggage around. Those are things for you to address. Uh-huh. But that doesn't mean that a man's standard should change based on what he's going to expect out of a wife. So if he's going to expect, a man has, if he has a certain level of expectations, mm-hmm. either you need to rise to him or move on. Because it's all about him setting these objectives so that he can see like, okay, this is what I'm getting. This is what I can spend the rest of my life with. Uh-huh. Okay, because outside of that, it's more than it's more than just looks. You gonna age, your body. You may have, you may have a six pack now in 10, 15 mm-hmm. years. You may not. We need to your know body about may change after the yeah. baby. Yeah. Credit. We need about credit. You be talk, we, we talk, need money. Yeah, all that. Finances, finances, all this, man, that's what huge. What you want to do? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's so many something? things. So like he has to be able to have that that mentality to say, you know what? I know I'm get myself into. I feel comfortable with this. I've talked to the friends, I've talked to the uncles, I've talked to my father, I've talked to my mother. I'm going into this marriage with the right mind, but yeah. if he has no demo yeah. to so, go off of, mm-hmm. he can't make that decision. Step into the vibrant world of Culture Boutique, your go-to fashion haven nestled at 518 East Trinity Avenue, Durham, North Carolina. Culture offers a meticulously curated collection that seamlessly blends the latest fashion trends with a dash of cultural elegance. The racks showcase an array of styles from eye-catching prints that pop with color to timeless classics that exude sophistication. What sets Culture Boutique apart is their commitment to celebrating the culture through clothing. And at the helm of it all is the owner, Maurice, a fashion enthusiast with an unwavering passion for uniting cultures through style. But don't just take their word for it. Their satisfied customers attest to the unbeatable quality and variety they provide. Whether you're seeking a show-stopping outfit for a special occasion or simply wanting to refresh your everyday wardrobe, Culture Boutique is your destination. Join them at 518 East Trinity Avenue, Durham, North Carolina, and let them help you tell your unique story through fashion. Come and embrace diversity in style through Culture Boutique, where every outfit narrates a rich tale of culture and individuality. Visit their website at shopculture.online to explore their latest collections and start your fashion journey today. Well, say, man, you used the word that we don't try to use in my house at all, which is expe- expectations, bro. Mm-hmm. We have generalizations. We don't have expectations. Mm-hmm. I generally cook, but I am not expected <laughs> to cook. Yeah. Okay. She generally irons, but she is not expected to iron. If she's tired and she has a long day and the clothes need to get ironed, mm-hmm. I'm going to iron. Right, yeah. right. If I've had a long day, she's going to cook dinner tonight because I've been yeah. on the road for fucking three days. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it, expectations, I think, gets murky because then you get into the whole deal breaker word and all of that. Yeah. And it's like, yo. Non-negotiables. Yeah. What, what, <laughs> you have, you're not willing to compromise. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's what you say. Act like a wife, act like a husband. Yeah. You got to be able to compromise. When you have an expectation or a, a non-negotiable, I don't think you're ever going to be happy. Yeah. Do you feel like uh, if you, if you, for example... If you go, if you're gone for four days, you got five, six parties in four mm. days. You come home. Do you have the forethought that your wife is going to look out for you for something to eat, or for certain things to be done because she knows your schedule and she's known you have been gone? Yes and no, and that's because I'm an absolute planner. Like I know that we are going to eat chicken tacos on Thursday for lunch. So I am an absolute planner. Like, I already had the food prepped and ready for her to cook. You know what I'm saying? Tonight, I'm just an absolute planner. So generalizations for expectations, like, yes, hey, baby, I'm a little bit tired. When I was in there, when they were recording earlier, 
hey, baby, I'm a little bit tired. Can you take our son to school tomorrow? I think I'm going to want to sleep in. Mm-hmm. I normally take my son to school. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm tired. I've been on the road. Hey, no problem, baby. Like, so yes and no. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I definitely expect to look out, but we plan so it's not like a, because I know I'm going to a party. Mm-hmm. I know I'm going to be working. We know we're going to be tired. So, hey, you're going to have to do some of the things that I normally do because I'm tired. Mm-hmm. Is it safe to say that expectations are okay if you la- if you have flexibility? Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I agree. Like I said, I think it's just a generalization. I just think right. the word expectation puts such a hard, like... Yeah, it's a hard word. It's, yeah, yeah. it's a hard yeah. word, and it puts people like, oh, I have to do this, or I have to be perfect, mm-hmm. or my husband expects me to, to do the laundry, and when I get home, I have to do it, even though she's been getting her ass work, kicked at work all day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or my a husband feels like he's expected, you know, not using it to rub some feet. And yeah. you don't know what he's been going through. Your why, yeah. why, you, why you gotta pick I, on me, man? No, 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 I'm just saying, you know, well, no, I'm just using that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, play with yeah. You. But it also but, comes down to you have to communicate. Absolutely. A hundred percent. As a planner, bro, 100%. you communicate it, hey, like let's eat chicken tacos on yeah, Thursday. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did my part. But now I have the expectation that you're going to keep your word and mm-hmm. do your part. Well, you know what? And go, going back to that, like Sam is saying communication is key because you communicated with her and said, oh, yo, I'm fatigued. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you take our son to school? Versus a person who's mismanaging expectations would be like, I expect you to know that I'm tired, yeah. so yeah. I expect you to take my son yeah. yeah. to school. And, I ain't said yeah. school. and yeah. that's, where, that's where it becomes problematic. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Because men sometimes, and I... I have to admit, I mean, this is a habit that I'm breaking, is that when I get hyper-focused on things sometimes, sometimes I feel like my wife is reading my mind mm-hmm. because we know each other so well. Right. But you also have to realize, too, that you know she has her own life. Mm-hmm. She has other things that she's thinking about. I'm pretty sure when kids come into the picture, like, yeah. they primarily thinking about the kids. Oh, it's a whole different world. <laughs> you, like, second way that, do you feel like you come second? Because you all have a kid? I've been not come second. <laughs> but now, nah, but you know what, though? Do you feel like sometimes you come second? I do. But at the same time, I understand because okay. there is nothing more powerful than seeing a woman and a child, like the love between a woman and a child. It's only me. Look, I need to I need to support that any way possible. Mm-hmm. Babe, I know you've been with him all day. Yeah. <laughs> what you need me to do for you right now? Yeah. What's, what yeah. needs to be done? Amen. It's perfectly fine. But <laughs> bet you when it's nap time or he, he got to go to sleep, we need to watch a movie. Mm-hmm. We need to have some intimacy, yeah. intimacy, intimacy time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I think it's, it's very, very important that we we nurture that because I think when we say you leaving me out in a way, you need to be doing something. You got to communicate a little better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You need to say, you know what? Hey, uh, I just want some time with you. You know, when we when we put, you know, I'll say um, our son down. Can we have some time together? Let's talk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let's dream. Let's get on Hulu or Netflix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's do something. Let's Netflix and chill. You know, that's what See, folks be saying now. I you think I think as men, sometimes we we're like, if I had to tell you to do it, then it don't mean the same. Mm. But how else? How, how else you gonna know? know? You know what I'm saying? How else you gonna know? To know? And I think women do a very good job communicating. They over communicate. Yeah, yeah. I need you to do this. I need you to do that. We don't right. say nothing. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. You right, see right, what I'm right, saying? Right. Yeah, I, I feel like that. I, I, I mean, just as this week, I've had to, you know, slap myself on the hand when it comes to that, is because like sometimes as men, we feel like yeah, you should know, or you should know mm-hmm. with this, or you know, you see me going through this, so you should know this. But it's like. Like you were saying, as men, the more and more we communicate, the more clear it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you're able to, as men, there's another gym, you're able to raise your expectations mm-hmm. because you've communicated clearly mm-hmm. what your expectations are what for you this needed. particular point in principle so that everybody is on the same playing field. Like, for example, <clears throat> your wife is going to take your son to school tomorrow, mm-hmm. but if she sleeps in and she wakes up and was like, oh, I thought you was taking him. The communication yeah. was there. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? That like, yeah. I, like you then have shifted the expectation. Like you're expecting to sleep in tomorrow and yeah. your wife take your son to school tomorrow. Mm-hmm. That's the expectation. Yep. You're going to wake up and think he's at school, but if he running around the house, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, then you wake up at 9, 10 o'clock, you're going to be like, <laughs> yeah, why is he not in school? Yeah, like yeah, we had yeah, this conversation right, right, and why did yeah. you not communicate to me that you were yeah. sleeping there? Yeah, 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 and, yeah. and and to be quite honest, I sent a text and was like, you know, it's probably not going to happen. I'm probably going to wake up and want to go to the gym and I'm probably going to take yeah. him to school anyway. But I wanted to put that out there because right now I am fatigued. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I spoke on my emotion right then because yeah. I wanted to go to sleep in there. I'm like, yeah. I am tired, bro. Yeah. I'm speaking so, on emotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You speak on your emotion. On, when you man. have it, bro, I, I think a lot of men um, like to let things build up and they don't yeah. speak on it. And 
it's very it's so much easier to just have a conversation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to be aggressive with it either. And mm-hmm. a lot of people don't understand. I think that. I think like like to your point, it's like you should know, right? And it's it's true. They should know because we had the expectation of if I'm telling you something, I know you're gonna do it. You know what I mean? If I communicate with you, I After need you to do this. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and we but we forget that part. We forget to communicate first. Mm-hmm. We just go to the I know you're going to do yeah, it. Exactly. You know what I mean? But exactly. it's like, if I need my clothes folded or whatever, and I ask you to do it, I know you're going to do it because that's the commitment that we yeah. made. Yeah, when right, we right, right. express what we need, we're going to do it for the other person. That's the commitment, not to read my mind. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can't, you can't commit to reading Wait, somebody's I, I mind. I know I'm on the podcast, but I want to ask, hmm. how do y'all feel about timelines? If you ask somebody to do something, <laughs> that was something that I had to work on because oh. I am a timeline my person. Right I am a I am a planner, bro. You said timeline. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm a planner, right dog. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I am like, yo, if my I wife over some... there laughing right now, cause, bro, this has been our whole week. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But I, like I'm like me when I say I am a planner. Like, bro, I'm gonna get up at five forty five. I'm gonna be to the gym by six fifteen. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna take a shower. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go work out. Take a shower. Take my son to school. Like, I am a planner mm-hmm. down to. Hey, right. we are eating a snack at four o'clock. Like that's how. Like yeah. our fucking food is on a note in a fucking <laughs> spreadsheet. Yeah. yeah. Like I am a planner. So I had to get out of that because my expectation was when I. That's when we stopped using that word because mm-hmm. my expectation was that hey, I've asked you to do this and I expected to get done now because yeah. I'm asking you to do it. I would have been doing it right now, but I'm yeah. doing something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm, I'm. I like timelines. Because it provides structure, organization, yep. it provides accountability, Absolutely. it provides transparency, it puts everything on the same page. It's if with your job or your employer, likely that you're going to be put on some type of timeline, and it's going to be at the expectation that you perform. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of times you can take those same principles and apply them to your marriage and have a positive result. You know, my wife, she's a lot, she's very free flowing. <laughs> We all laugh because we, <laughs> everybody knows. Yeah, we all everybody's the same. Everybody's wife is free flowing. <laughs> she laughing. She laughing. They like, they like, laughing. <laughs> they like to be that they all drunk. Yeah, they yeah. gonna get it done. They gonna get it done though. But in our heads, we like, yo, this time. It could be done a couple hours ago. It could have been done a couple hours ago. Now yeah. you gonna ask me while I'm working? I don't want to yeah. do all right, 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 right. Yeah. So I think timelines are healthy, but I feel like you might want to build your timeline knowing your woman. Yep, that's how I do learn. That's a key. So if you know your woman is simply going to get it done in your mind a day late, then what you would prefer, you need to go ahead and build that into your time. Ask a day early, dog. I I plan dates two hours before I actually need you to be there every time. Come on now. I I, I do. I send invitations. So I literally say 7 o'clock movie time for a 9 o'clock movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Do it every time. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. Uh, When it comes to timelines... I'm very bad, man. I set a timeline, like, we need to get this accomplished. If she hadn't got to it, I'll just do it. Mm. Yeah. And How does that go over with? Mm. Yeah, that's that. Oof. Oof. I'm going to tell, tell you two things. <laughs> One, for me, I internalize it. I'm mad now. I'm yeah. doing it, but I'm upset. Yeah, yeah. that you got to do it. That yeah. I got to do it. Because, I, asked you, because, I asked you and you didn't Because do it. now yeah. I'm already working at 10. Mm. Now I got to work at 10.1. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I've already reached my max. You yep. see what I'm saying? Mm. Yep. And then for her, it's like, I was going to do it. Now you've taken away whatever task or responsibility that I have for that day away from me. So mm. what am I bringing to the table? So now I'm making her low-key feel less than mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rather than believing in her that she's gonna do it How and allowing her to support. If you remind her to do it and she has not Ooh, done it yet. I got it. <laughs> I got it. And then and then for me, for me, I gotta figure out the best way to say it without making the conversation turn left. Okay, baby, I was just asking because I know yesterday you said you was gonna do it, right? <laughs> then I see the facial expression, uh-huh. like, you know what? I know you got it. You see what I'm saying? But it, honestly, all those situations helped me understand how to communicate with my wife. Right. It's, it's a process. It's, it's like we had a conversation earlier on emotional intelligence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It just fines tune the emotional intelligence. Absolutely. It's like it's, you're learning, you're learning, you're learning, you're learning. You're just feeding it. It's kind of like AI. The more you feed it, the more it learns, right? It's beautiful, and I think though. that's the same thing that happens with us. Like, I, what, what, what would you go I, say? I normally just put out a reasonable timeline. <laughs> like, hey, I need you to do this, and I need this done before In three four days. o'clock. Like you know what I'm saying? Oh, I need this. I need this done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Three before this, because I'm doing this. Like, 
hey, I need you to, you know what I'm saying, cut up the salad, you know what I'm saying, before because we're going to eat at 5.30. I need that yeah. done before 5 so I can set the plate at 5.15. And communicate if you can't yeah. get it done. I think that's where the the real internalizing anger, you know, so I had to tell my wife, like, I need you to tell me if you're not going to be able to get it done yeah. because in my mind it's done. Because I've told you, you expectations. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I told you that, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> hey, so in my mind it's done and then I come and look and, you know what I'm saying, the suitcase hasn't been emptied out but I haven't communicated with you that I wanted the suitcase emptied out so I could put it in the attic when I get home before I take a shower so mm -hmm. I don't sweat again. Right. Yeah. I never communicated <laughs> yeah, yeah. that part. Right. So to her, it's just like, oh, I, I'll undo the suitcase whenever. Right. Yeah, now you See, mad. I'm bad, yeah. you I'm bad at the reminders. Yeah. Because yeah. I get to that point, I'm, about, I'm at 10, and now I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, I guess I'm about to fold these clothes. Yeah, and you See, tight. that's not a good reminder. And, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and then you phone them. You mad, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. You right. mad phone them. them clothes. But I'm going to tell y'all something, though. I think that, and I'm, I'm, I am, I'm about to get vulnerable real quick. You know what I'm saying? Um, I internalize things so much, so bad, to the point I start losing hair. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I had I, right now I'm diagnosed with alopecia or retina. Obviously, the hair can grow back, mm -hmm. but it's got to that point for me to understand. Oh, what's going? It's changing me. I need yeah. to talk. Do you that, feel like? Just... Do you feel like the more you internalize it, the more stressful? More stress it is. See, I, I've said this before. I don't even know. I can't even identify stress. Wow. I just do it. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm such a doer to the point that okay, if I needed this to be done and you couldn't do it, I'm gonna take care of it. What does fatigue look like to you? <laughs> Not being able to work in purpose. Do you ever experience like just times of, like, physical fatigue and mental frustration at the same time? Only time I experience that is when I feel like my significant other isn't supporting me. But she is the oil to my engine. Without her oil, I can't move the way that I need to move. I can't have a sense yeah. of direction. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Obviously, we have God that gives me the discernment. Hey, son, work on your purpose. Mm -hmm. But then my wife is saying, no, mm -hmm. I'm not going to do this today and support what you got going on. Mm -hmm. Right? Do you feel like... Do you feel like if your wife said that she can no longer support your purpose, do you feel like you still could operate in your purpose? <laughs> I've done it. Okay. So you feel like you can? Absolutely. So you do you do you feel like it may be healthy and then like you walk in China? Absolutely. Too. Yeah. Do you feel like it may be healthy? You, are you familiar with the law of detachment? Absolutely. So do you maybe do you feel like it may be healthy to detach from the idea that I must have my wife to operate on my purpose in order for my stress and concern level to be low. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because, like, for example, I told my wife, and I didn't tell this, I didn't say this in a, in a way of, like, the fact of telling her I didn't need her. Mm -hmm. She knows I do. Absolutely. Trust me, she knows I do. <laughs> very dependable. Come on, wife. So she, she, she knows I didn't say it like this, but she knows I was dead ass serious. <clears throat> I'm. I was literally born, shaped, molded to be like a one man show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't need no affirmations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially like for my. Now I'm not talking about like as a husband. I'm talking right. about like as for my purpose. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Like I don't need no affirmations. I don't need a pat on the back. Mm -hmm. I don't need no hug. I don't need none of that. Right. All I need is straight grind. And get time. it done. You know what I want? I want positive achievement results. Mm -hmm. Manifestation. Then I sit back and get back into my, mm -hmm. to my mode of mm -hmm. like, all right, cool, I can relax because it's done now. Right. But I've never been the type of purpose purpin, person that I'm. I'm. I'm more so. I'm going to inspire you to tap into your purpose because I'm so fine tuned into identifying purpose and actually going about it and doing it. You know, people out here that say they have a purpose in something and they never do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm fulfilled. I'm the person. I'm like a dog. I'm like a pit bull with a bone. Yeah, like whenever I get a hold of something, I don't let it go. Mm -hmm. I fine tune it. I reshape it. I mold it. I break it down. Rebuild it again. Shift things around. Make changes. Get uncomfortable. Be humble. Ask for help. I would do anything and everything on this earth to fulfill my purpose. Right, right. And I don't need anybody to. I have the intrinsic motivation to do that. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like, and Sam and, and LG, do you all feel like? It's healthy for men to have that intrinsic motivation like that? Or do you feel like that extrinsic motivation from your wife to fine-tune your purpose is needed? 
Um, so I, I don't, one, I don't think a lot of men have that drive, first off. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, everybody has a plan, but can you execute it? Mm-hmm. Being in the business and the business that I'm in, I mean, I get 10 collaboration idea requests a day. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, let's do this, let's do this. Can you execute it? What are you mm-hmm. doing on your own? Can you mm-hmm. execute it without me? Because mm-hmm. if you can't do it without me, there's no reason for me to partner with you, right. for one. Um, so I don't think a lot of guys have that tenacity anyway. Two, for me, I I would never detach because for me, we are we're a team. We're a goal, we're a team and we have a goal. And why it's like getting a house. People are like, I can do it by myself. Well, why wouldn't you want a partner to do yeah, it? You right. got two people going yeah, towards right. one goal. Right. I want to raise a kid. Well, why wouldn't I do it with my partner? So yeah. two people are raising well, one kid. Yeah. 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 yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Like yeah. Well, so I, I look I look at that with <laughs> my purpose, you know what I'm saying? My wife yeah. believes in my purpose, and it, mine is not as fine as y'all's. I know my purpose is to bring people together, Absolutely. but I don't know what that looks like. Mm-hmm. I do it in events because I've done it my entire life, but I don't know what it is. You know, my my purpose is to bring people together. That yeah. That's what it is. And that's that's what it yeah. yeah, yeah. And whatever shape and form that, and yeah. whatever season that you're in, whatever season that you're in, and you feel like, oh, all right, the people need this. Like we was talking about <laughs> in the back um, behind set, Talking about it, like burner days, yeah, and how you used to do that, and that's yeah, how I learned fest. about burner yeah. fest. You know, that's how I learned about who you. Uh, that's why I heard first heard the name burner, yeah, and people saying they, they was going to burner fest. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was like, who's that? And mm-hmm. I looked you up, and I'm like, okay, that's dope. Yeah. And then years later, here you are, yeah. black flower on the wall. So it shows you that yeah. you know once you put sow that mental seed into mm-hmm. the universe, it can manifest, manifest and germinate into something that you want it to be, right? Absolutely. And so it's dope to have you here on the show. But I feel like like. Many times, our drive can be detailed, but our dreams don't need to be. Mm. Like, our dreams can be as broad as we want them yeah, to be. Yeah, and absolutely. as we grow and as we water ourselves mm-hmm. be through it, yeah. be fluid, which is what we gain from our wives, right? right? Yeah. We, gain, we gain that fluidity. As we take those things from them, and we, we oftentimes just sit back and relax a lot of times we're not as strict, stringent, and, ri- and rigid. Right. Yeah. So we are now can accept what the universe or yeah. what God or what the world wants to give us right. because we're, we're, we're free flowing and we're open to receiving mm-hmm. yeah. many times. Like as men, like, like I said, the objectivity is oftentimes sometimes our worst enemy because it makes us so rigid and so strict yeah. on what we can and cannot do. And so I think the, the, the moral of the story is getting back to, you know, what men want, you know, uh, act like a wife before you become one. It's sincerely about, you know, and it's not about the 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 the, the, the gender wars or the debates that's or the anything problem, like that. Man. Everybody yeah, thinks that's, that's what marriage yeah, is, yeah, bro. Yeah. Like, oh, it's not, man. It's not, it's not about that. <laughs> yeah. Really what it's about is, it's like every day you wake up looking for a way to serve mm-hmm. your the partner other. and then your partner looking for a way to serve you, yeah. understanding that you're going to have their back, they're going to have your back. And if you all function in that, giving spirit mm-hmm. then nobody is ever going to be in lack yeah. mm-hmm. absolutely like now of course like in reality there's some things that you just can't do to for your partner some yeah. things have to be done individually but you can support them along mm-hmm. the journey yeah. i think it's all about understanding like we talked about discernment we talked about emotional intelligence today we talked about communication we talked about practical stuff mm-hmm. real life scenarios yeah. just about understanding it's a lot of similarities as men, and mm-hmm. we've never had conversations yeah. about marriage and wives and all that, and, we, and our stories are very, very, very similar. Because mm-hmm. we're not on an island. Yeah. Right, man. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. I would say this is a great space, because a lot, of, I mean, me and my friends are starting to have the more uncomfortable conversations yeah. that black men don't have, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? These emotional conversations. Tap into your vulnerability. Yeah, yeah. about uh, the conversations about marriage. Hey, what, what's good, what's bad, you know what I'm saying? What you'd be surprised, you? like, you, you, sometimes you, like Sam said, you feel like you're in something alone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you start talking to people, you're like, yeah. going through the this same is common. Yeah. 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 And it makes you feel good, but like, yeah. okay, shoot. Yeah. It's about a million other men going, mm-hmm. going ahead yeah. of the same thing. Same, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. same week. Some worse, some better. Right, yeah. right, right. And, then, and, and two, talking to your friends, mm-hmm. you'd be like, yeah, my marriage ain't, what, what we had going on this week ain't that bad. Yeah, yeah. Right. nah, yeah. for yeah. sure, bro. You know, and it puts things into perspective, and it makes you go hug your wife and, and love them I'm, a little I'm, bit I'm more so, because I'm so like, you know what, you ain't as bad as I thought you were. But so grateful, you know what I'm saying? So grateful for the support, so grateful, you know what I'm saying? I I I have 
friends that are in this business that, you know what I'm saying, can't keep a girl. Mm -hmm. Can't, you know what I'm saying, because mm -hmm. the girl don't trust them or the girl doesn't understand why they're why they're going out and doing this on a Thursday or why you're not making no money off this event. No, I need to go show face. Like, I need to go out mm -hmm. and go to this party mm -hmm. so that people see me, so people understand. That. I mean, yeah, right. yeah, right. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, super grateful, bro. I think a lot of people just look at this situation and not just with their wives and life and they're so hard on themselves and it's like, yo, it could be a lot worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's difficult. I mean, community is key. Yes. Um, and, a, and for a lot of our brothers that need to know, you know, what it takes to even be a husband. Yeah, no, you see what I'm saying? It takes man. community. Though, it takes community, that, man. man. Like sometimes like the OG, what the OGs told us, the fathers, the uncles and all that. <laughs> it's skewed. It's skewed and it's dated. Yeah. Yeah, but like so, like we don't often with much reverence and deference mm -hmm. yeah. to the the OGs, the uncles, the mentors, and the fathers. You also have to understand too that we're living in a time different time. different yeah. that is different. technology, yeah. technology, man. social yeah. People. media, <laughs> just overall activity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like our activity level is more. We're going to brunch. We're going to day parties. Mm -hmm. The yeah, only party yeah. they went to was the the, yeah. the juke joint. The juke <laughs> joint. Yeah. They didn't. They, they really. I mean, they had a couple clubs. And, and yeah. if you lived in a major city, but right, from right, the south, right. you went to the juke joint in, right. in the neighborhood on the dirt road, mm -hmm. and you saw the same people there. And Johnny was drunk at the bar every yeah. weekend. Yeah. Right. That's different for us now. It's so many other distractions. Yeah. And when you take them to homecoming, they be like, "Boy, yeah, 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 come on, young yeah. brother." These, Man, marriages, these, marriages, yeah, yeah, yeah. these <laughs> marriages today are not our grandparents' marriages, right. yeah. as well they shouldn't be. Nah. Like you know, nah. what I mean, it, it's it's evolution, nah, it's growth. It like takes, they shouldn't it take, be. It takes yeah. wise people though to to really understand that and mesh. Right? Mm -hmm. right? I'm not gonna stop you from going where you want to go. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Let's communicate and let's work things out so we can be in a better place. Mm -hmm. Right? You know what I'm saying? I think it's very, very important. The outdated thing is is it's by nice. far the biggest thing that, that people don't understand. Mm -hmm. I was talking to one of my OGs, and I was like, you know, sh share your location with me. He was like, you know, why? And I'm like, well, why the fuck wouldn't we take care of technology? Like, <laughs> yeah. why wouldn't we use this to our advantage? And sorry to all the husbands out here that's listening to this. Like, me and my wife have each other's location. Why would my significant other right, right, right. and my we emergency contact yeah, absolutely. not have my location, bro? Like, what are, what are you it. talking about, bro? It's a safety thing. Yeah, it is a safety thing. Why would I not have my wife's location, bro? They well, are fucking doing down, everything. Like, on the lighter side, it makes it cuts down on always asking where you at. Yeah, yeah. bro. <laughs> you can you can get on the back. I'm, I'm such a ask. planner <laughs> yeah. that I want to know what time. That I have dinner on the table so I can look that my wife is picking up my son from school. Hey, she's gonna be home in 15 minutes. I can start doing this, this, and this for to receive her and my child into the home. Helps mm -hmm. you be efficient. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So, but I mean, but man, that's a whole no. We did an episode one time. Yeah. On, uh, should, your, should your significant other have the, yeah. should your wife in this case have the password to your phone? Absolutely. So like, so it's like these 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 are the type of conversations that are practical mm -hmm. that many people get divorced over, get have broke, have called off uh, engagements over simple things like that that really are really the, the fundamentals is that it's a lack of emotional intelligence it's mm -hmm. a lack of communication but uh, amazing conversation gentlemen man talking about marriage wives I think it's important for black women and black men to see more young millennial mm -hmm. married men discussing marriage in a healthy way discussing marriage from the point of view of we're not putting on like our marriages are perfect mm -hmm. yeah. we're, we're talking about real problems real things that you can apply and deploy in your marriage mm -hmm. and also to understand that you are not alone I think the consensus is that women should act like wise before marriage so that you can operate and usher yourself into mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying you, you're you're the, the the most common terms is faking it till you make it yeah. Yeah. but really on a spiritual level you attracting this is for the women you are attracting marriage to you because you're already operating as so. Energy yeah, exchange. And the universe is going to send it to you. Yeah, yes. facts. You're operating as so. Facts. You are operating in the fact of, and, it, and uh, Neville Goddard says that you persist in what you believe in until it hardens into fact. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you persistently operate on a, at a certain level until it hardens into this reality. Mm -hmm. And I think acting like a wife the same way men, we opening that door, we picking up the tab, we providing security, we're providing safety. We check and see if you need anything. We buying you flowers. We meeting your family. We going on vacations. Mm -hmm. We managing finances together on the lower level, so that one day we can see how it goes on a bigger level. These are all things that, as solid, upstanding men, are acting like husbands. And I think men want the same thing in return. So, Absolutely. So amazing conversation, gentlemen. 
Um, thank you for the insight, the vulnerability. Sure, appreciate mm-hmm. you Come on, now, bro. We're looking at bringing y'all boys back again. Absolutely, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we got more in the tank, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah, appreciate sure. you. It, bro. Good one, good one. For my brothers, never had an ear to hear me. These are the bricks for our sisters, help us build it. If I could be a black fly on the wall, I can hear and see it all and have the mind of a god. Black, 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 black. Fly, 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 fly. Black, black, black.